Hello and this is Golf Louis with a video about the Keysight Smart Bench Essentials. Today I'll be talking about the Keysight EDU 33212A waveform generator and I'll be showing an unconventional demo which I hope you'll appreciate. This here is a dial-up modem from yesteryear which very few people use nowadays but is great for demonstrating the basics of modulation and demodulation. In the back I have connected a phone line which I have modified to end in a BNC plug so that it can be attached into port number one on the waveform generator. I'm using the waveform generator's PSK mode to be able to modulate some data onto a carrier. In this case, the modulation is coming from the external port which I have modified to a set of DuPont wires connected to an FTDI USB to UART adapter. So I've got the frequency set up at the moment to match the specifications needed for V23. Now V23 is an asymmetric uh, FSK based modulation where uh, one channel, the downstream channel usually, has 1200 BPS data rate and the reverse channel has only 75 BPS. In this case um, the Keysight waveform generator will be forming the 1200 BPS data stream towards the modem. And for that I have set the V23 mode 2 tone set of 2100 space and 1300 mark. Now the output impedance has been set to 600 ohms to match that of the telephone line. That way the amplitude uh, readings and settings are correct. In this case I have set the amplitude to minus 20 dBm which corresponds to something which a modem might find on a phone line. Now I've also set a DC offset of 5 volts. This is necessary because the hybrid inside the modem appears to be a wet hybrid and needs some current to be running through the loop for the signal to be recognized by the modem. Now the modem will be transmitting some signals back and this will actually technically go into the waveform generator but because the power is so low it's probably not a big deal. Ideally you would probably have a hybrid transformer at the other end instead of just that BNC plug that way the uh, transmit and receive paths can be separated. So why don't I try and get this demo running now it's going to take a little bit of fiddling around because uh, the tones do need to alternate between the mark and space tone for the modem to detect the modulation type. So I'm going to have to wiggle some wires around before the connection can get established. But first um, let's bring up the connection terminal and let's just check the status of the modem. You can see it's a real modem. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to dial out. In order to do that I must turn off the dial tone detection because this is not actually a, um, an outside loop. And then I will turn on the speaker permanently and I will make it dial. Now I will turn on the output and you can hear the tone is coming through now. Now I will need to play around with the connection to get the mark in space. Okay, now it's detected a V23 connection. You can hear the back channel tone being modulated by the modem and being sent back. Now 1200 BP, uh, BPS RX is detected. Now I've got a small beacon script which will send a, um, a message every one second. And so let's see what happens when I execute that. You can hear the modulation in the audio as well as see the message being successfully sent from the UART adapter into the modulation for the FSK in the waveform generator being modulated onto a carrier and then demodulated by the modem back into the message. So this shows you how you can use the external input of the waveform generator to modulate a signal in such a way that it actually produces something that can be recognized by a commodity device. Of course, we can always hang up on the uh, on the waveform generator, escape sequence, ATH to hang up, 
and we're done. So this is just one of the interesting things you can do with an external modulation input and that's part of the reason why having a dedicated waveform generator is quite a bit more flexible than uh, using say the onboard wave gen of the uh, DSO which sits above. Um, another flexibility is simply the fact that there are two channels on this waveform generator so if you didn't want to uh, modulate from an external input before I had a pseudo random bit stream coming in from the second uh, channel which can be used to modulate the first channel and here is the second demo which I had promised uh, here is my ICOM ICR20 communications receiver this is a uh, handheld radio with a lot more frequency range and modes than your average radio and I've got it hooked up to port 1 via a BNC cable. Now port 1 is set to an output impedance of 50 ohms that's because it is attached to a receiver uh, that way the uh, amplitude should look correct. The frequency is set to 13.561 MHz which is in the HF band it's a frequency very close to the NFC near field communications so I don't think it'll be bothering anybody um, that probably won't leak out of the cable anyway so it's not going to cause any major trouble. The amplitude is set to minus 56 dBm which is about the minimum that this uh, waveform generator can put out. Uh, the offset is 0 volts because we don't need any DC coming into the radio and it has been set to modulate in FM mode and if we look into the modulate menu the source is set to channel 2 and the FM deviation to 600 Hz and so the modulation will be controlled by channel 2. If we go over to channel 2 now we can see a PRBS, a pseudo random bit stream has been selected at 1200 BPS the amplitude is probably not so important but we can change the uh, PRBS data stream and the edge time. Okay, so why don't we listen to what this sounds like. So if I turn on the radio, you can hear absolutely nothing because there is no output. But if I turn on the output now, you can hear modulated data coming out. And so this radio is on upper sideband at 13.56 kilohertz so that the carrier would come out at one kilohertz. That way we can actually hear it. Of course, what we can do now is we can change under parameter the PRBS data stream, which will create a different pattern. Listen carefully. This is PN7. This is PN9. That's PN11. That's PN15. That's PN20. And that's PN23. So another thing we can change is the data rate and that will affect the way it sounds. So if let's key in say 300 BPS we can see how much slower that sounds. If we slow it down all the way to say 45 BPS, that will sound just like radio teletype. So why don't we give that a try? You could even go lower. You could literally put it down to say 10 BPS and then it will sound a bit like Morse code. The key thing to remember here is that the PRBS bitstream is basically modulating the output frequency and the output frequency is actually a radio frequency in this case within the range of the waveform generator. So it is actually possible to create some kind of radio. 
Um, it is also possible to amplitude modulate or frequency modulate um, a, a function like a, a sine wave or a sweep, uh, but those come internally. There's no analog modulation, but that's kind of what you would expect from a waveform generator like this. You can put arbitrary waveform generation as well, so if you pre-compute uh, some waveforms up to one mega samples uh, per waveform and up to eight separate waveforms, it is possible to, uh, to generate arbitrary waveforms out of the EDU 33212A. However, that's uh, my demonstration here today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and please read the full road test review at Element 14 Community. This is Gough Louie, signing off.